I've been reading tarot for over 20 years and I've probably got more than my fair share of tarot decks. And yet when someone asks me to recommend a deck for them or to like list my top five decks for beginners, it just sets me spinning. And while I'm prepared to accept that some of that is my own personal brand of weirdness, <laughs> some of it is not. And this video is to kind of explain why I think actually there are there is no such thing as a beginner tarot deck. And that recommending decks for other people is a lot more complicated than people seem to realise. Welcome Kinders, it's Jessica here on my channel. I share what I've learned and what I'm learning over my 30 plus years of practicing as a Welsh folk witch. One of the tools that I use every day in my practice is tarot. I love tarot. But after pondering a lot about why I can't just like trip off a list of five decks for beginners or make recommendations without agonizing over it, I've come to the conclusion that it's because beginner decks don't actually exist. <laughs> Let me explain why. And I thought it would be more fun than like sort of you sitting here watching me chatting about this I'm going to trim my Gorgon's Tarot and put that as a film but if you don't want to watch that you can just get a cup of tea and kind of listen to this podcast style. Let's start with unraveling what it means for a deck to be suitable for a beginner. Does that mean that they are beginner tarot decks? I think this is a misnomer for a couple of reasons. First, the term beginner deck implies basic or simplistic, like training wheels. Once you don't need them anymore, you move on to real decks. You see where I'm going with this? It gives the impression that you start with a beginner level deck and then move on to a higher level deck, leaving that beginner deck behind. But tarot doesn't work like that. It's not like those learn to read books, which get incrementally harder as you get more competent. If you have a tarot deck in your hand, you are holding the whole world, the universe. So I don't think you can assign a kind of grade or level to a tarot deck in a way that makes any real sense. It's not the deck that's a beginner, it's the reader. You could work with just one deck for 60 years and during that time move through being a beginner to intermediate to an advanced reader. Your readings would grow in depth and neons, all using the exact same deck. Yes, there are some decks with keywords and helpful guidebooks, but tarot is inherently a layered and complex system. If there are decks which aren't layered and complex, and I don't think that makes them simple and good for a beginner, it just makes them not a very good deck, in my opinion. <laughs> Although if other people find that that deck reads well for them, then it could just mean it's not a good deck for me. And that's a real thing too. When people are recommending beginner decks, what they're actually saying is that I find this deck is easier to read with than some other decks. And for sure, I've definitely found that there are some decks which read more easily for me than others. So perhaps we should be calling them easy readers rather than beginner decks. But this is problematic too, because what is one person's easy reader may not be for someone else. We're all different, bringing our own prior knowledge and experience of the world to our tarot work. And we all respond in different ways, even when the stimuli, the tarot deck is the same. I'll admit there do seem to be some decks which have imagery that seems to speak to a large number of people. There's a reason why decks like the Light Seers, Modern Witch, Green Witch, you can probably think of others, are so popular. It's because lots of people find the imagery of these decks just kind of makes sense to them. I think this is why sometimes people find fandom decks are good for beginners. If you really know the characters of that fandom, then you can bring the knowledge of those stories to the interpretation. It's basically like a shortcut into getting to know the deck because you actually already know it in a way. Though this only works when, you, when the fandom deck is done well, which not all of them are. Some of you might be horrified at the idea of recommending a fandom deck to a beginner reader, but I think it's not so strange. They already have the prior knowledge which can make the transition easier. It's like having a cheat sheet or a scaffold already in place. This can work with other types of decks too. For example, something like the Celestial Tarot might work for you if you're already knowledgeable about astrology and constellations. Or the Mythic Tarot might be an easy read for you if you have a working knowledge of classical mythology. Or an Angel Tarot if you know about angels. Or a herb-based tarot if you know about herbs. Basically, the common thread is that you already have knowledge of these things. So it's, in effect, providing a shortcut into the symbolism, which helps you to learn to read the tarot. And you can then take with you that with you when you work with other decks, if that's what you want to do. On the other end of the spectrum from fandom and novelty decks, I also often see the original decks of the main tarot systems, so the original Rider-Waite-Smith or Toth, not so much with the TDM I guess, 
being recommended to beginners and I get the reasons for this. Once you know that original deck well, then it makes reading other decks based on the same system easier. Um, it's similar to what I was saying about the fandom or special interest decks, but this time you have to put the learning in first and then you have that foundation, which means you can easily use any deck which is based on that system. And as those systems have grown out of Western occult tradition, a lot of the symbolism just kind of clicks when you've grown up in that culture. For other people, these OG decks are totally unappealing. So again, I don't think they are universally useful as a recommendation for beginner readers. Like some people say, you know, you have to start with the original Rider Waite Smith. And I just don't think that that is the case because if that imagery doesn't resonate, then, you know, that's a hard pass. <laughs> but what I do think is useful is having an understanding of these basic systems or um, traditions of tarot. So I'm not going to go into the whole history of tarot here, but something I don't see being talked about too much, which I think is really helpful when trying to identify a good deck for a beginner or how just a good deck in general, <laughs> is an understanding of the three main systems of tarot. If you already know about the different systems of tarot and you want to skip this part, I'll put timestamps down below. But I thought it would be useful to include it as it's something which is kind of fundamental, but which I don't see being talked about in the same conversation as those talking about recommending decks. What I found is that one of these systems of tarot seems to speak to people more than the others. That might be because of the design, although with so many modern reinterpretations of the decks, there's different aesthetics available in all three systems. I think it's more that like the essence or the bones of one of the systems just makes more intuitive sense to people than the others. So people tend to gravitate naturally towards the system which resonates with them. Though that's not to say that you can't learn the others too. And I've even seen where someone who has read with Rider Waite Smith for years learns the Toth and only then realise that that's the system they've been yearning for. And that, it, you know, and that just makes more more sense to them which is another reason why knowing about the different systems is so useful anyway I'm getting a bit ahead of myself let's talk tarot systems or traditions perhaps lineages is a better word actually the the oldest lineage of tarot is tarot de Marseille often called TDM or pip decks in the tarot community in these decks there are 78 cards 22 major arcana 56 minor arcana the major arcana have pictures but the minor arcana are more stylistic or like pattern orientated in this system, the strength card is number 11 and the justice card is 8. TDM is growing in popularity in recent years and there are some good resources available now if you want to work with this system, like Tom Benjamin's book. There are also modern versions of TDM decks being created, including some like fun and cute styles that perhaps you wouldn't expect when it's such like a kind of oldie looking deck. The newest established lineage of tarot, established lineage of tarot, is the one created by the occultist Alistair Crowley and Lady Frida Harris, the Toth, <laughs> the infamous Toth, or Toth, or Tot. <laughs> tarot nerds argue about the pronunciation. <laughs> Toth decks have the standard 78 cards, like the TDM, with 22 major and 56 minor. In the Toth system decks, the Justice card, um, which is called Adjustment, is numbered 8, and card 11 which would be strength in the TDM is called Lust. Uh, there are also some other differences with the naming of the court cards and the minors are kind of pippish, you know, rather than being pictorial representations like you find on the Rider Smith. Modern Toth type decks draw on the system originally created by Crowley, though as with other modern reimaginings of the decks, the styles you can get can vary quite a lot. The third and best known system is Rider Waite Smith decks, usually referred to as RWS. This was created by Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith. They were originally called Rider Waite, but in recent years, the huge contribution of Pamela Coleman Smith, Pixie, has been increasingly recognised. Thank goodness. Like TDM and Toth, there are 78 cards, 22 major arcana, 56 minor arcana. Strength is number eight because Arthur Waite felt this matched up better with the astrological associations, and I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> And justice is 11. The suits are wands, which map to the element of fire, swords, which map to air, cups, which map, which map, to, war, map to water, and pentacles, which map to earth. That is the same in all three of the systems. Rider Waite Smith is the most popular tarot system, with the vast majority of new tarot decks created being derived from the Golden Dawn symbolism and meanings from Pixie's OG deck. This has also meant that the majority of books about tarot, including Rachel Pollock's classic 78 Degrees of Wisdom, are written about this version of the deck. RWS is my personally preferred system. It just makes more sense to me, which may be because it's a system I've been reading with daily for almost 20 years now, but I feel like it's something deeper than that. It's like I've just got an innate understanding of the symbolism and archetypes of, that, of this tarot system. 
My first tarot deck was the Gilded Tarot, but not too long afterwards I got a copy of the original RWS deck, which the Gilded Tarot system is based on, along with a copy of 78 Degrees of Wisdom, and that really helped with getting the fundamentals for me. It's meant that I can just pick up a tarot deck and read with it, even if I've never seen it before. Of course, the imagery on the deck will influence my interpretations, but it's like there's a kind of coded knowing of the meanings of these cards or keys, which just clicks into place and flows when I'm reading. There's a tendency to think of RWS as being inherently like less complex than TOF and TDM, and that's why it's recommended for beginners. But I take issue with this. Definitely, there are more resources available for learning when using the RWS system, undeniably. Plus, there are just many, many more decks created based on this system. But it's not like you start with RWS and then you like graduate to a more complex, by which people tend to assume better system like TOF or TDM. The way tarot works is that all of the meanings are possible in whichever system you're using. RWS derived decks are not beginner decks and then Toth intermediate and then TDM advanced or vice versa. Like I said, I believe it's more that a particular system will resonate more than the others with each reader, though having a working knowledge of all of them is great. A really quick note before moving on, there can be hybrid decks which blend two or more of the tarot systems or decks which are labelled as tarot but which have more or less cards than 78 and which have different assigned meanings than the ones usually used for the systems I've described above. These are kind of like other tarot decks. Some would even say that they aren't really tarot at all and I would generally agree with that. That's not to say they're not useful as divination tools. It can be fun and illuminating to play with these kind of decks. I have a Jane Austen one which reads pretty well. But I just see it as being a different beast from a like a real tarot deck. There are also whole other standalone systems like Oracle decks and Lenormand, which are great. But again, not what I'm talking about here in this video as I'm focused on tarot. I don't think like these non-standard tarot decks are beginner friendly unless the reader just wants to stick with that deck moving forward because the reading skills learnt with these decks are not so easily transferable to the standard systems. Well, like some of them are, like tuning into your intuition while you read. But hopefully you see what I mean. Perhaps conversely, but perhaps not, I would say that there are some other decks which are definitely not beginner friendly too. These are usually those decks with more like obscure references in the artwork or which relate to other esoteric systems like astrology or alchemy, which, you know, I guess you could say the Toth deck is in that ballpark. Um, decks I would put in this category are like the Mary L, Spirit Keepers Tarot, all of Robert M. Place's decks. Other decks which I don't find beginner friendly are those which stray quite far from their OG system or which rely on understanding of certain correspondences, like a knowledge of herbs or animals. With these decks, you usually have to put in a decent amount of work with a guidebook getting to know the nuances of meaning in each card at the beginning and if you don't want to put that level of work in with your deck then you might want to avoid these but if you enjoy when a creator puts their own spin on the traditional meanings it can be really rewarding to do deep dives with these kinds of decks getting to know them and bonding with them my personal and favourite kind of decks are those which have a recognisable meaning that can be traced back to an original system it's based on, but which then has like added layers of meaning due to the way that the artwork and sometimes the guidebook too has been created. I find all of Barbara Moore's decks do this, as do most of Paulina Cassidy's, and it's why the Guardian of the Night Tarot catapulted into my favourite decks after only a month of using it. So all of this so far has been me justifying why I'm terrible at recommending decks. <laughs> but I want this video to be useful. So here's my top five decks for beginners. Joke, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I do have some criteria for figuring out if a deck will be a good fit for me, which I think will translate to other people too. So first, I wanna know which system is it? Yeah, I know I've gone on about this already, but I'd like to know what system or lineage a deck is based in, or if it's a non-standard system before choosing. So you'd think working this out would be quite easy, but it isn't always so simple because on the listings of the decks, that information isn't always included. Uh, it, it often says if, if it's like based on Rider Waite Smith, but for the other ones, you know, it's like, hmm, I'm not so sure. And also you can't always tell if they are like kind of deviations from that norm. So it's great that we've got like walkthrough videos here on YouTube because by seeing a full flip through, it's usually clear which system the deck is based in. So there are often variations, like I said, like changes in the suit names and sometimes renaming of court cards and majors. But you can see in a walkthrough if the imagery itself is mostly consistent with the lineage when you see all the cards. So if you have a preferred system or you're looking to try a deck in a specific different system, then knowing that the deck was designed in that paradigm is a great place to start with choosing. The second thing I look for is whether the imagery on the cards 
speaks to me. And I guess also that it looks easy for me to read. Um, my test for this is whether I immediately get insights when looking at certain cards. I find photos of the deck better than videos for this, although you know you can pause a video and spend some time with a specific card. I also look for things like keywords or characters or archetypes that I recognize, though sometimes I find that I get insight from completely abstract things like color blobs. Basically, if I look at the card and can get a feeling, get a sense of what it means without having to look anything up, then that deck is speaking to me. The third thing I look for is good support materials. This can mean the guidebook. Some decks have amazing guidebooks. Some guidebooks are not worth the paper they're printed on. My favorite is when I find a deck where the imagery resonates and then the perspective in the guidebook offers another whole layer of meaning. Like I said, I get this a lot with Barbara Moore decks. Having an interesting guidebook is great for tarot readers at all levels, but I think it's extra important for beginners. Usually during flip throughs on YouTube, the creator will show the guidebook or you can ask in Facebook groups whether the companion book is useful. Always bearing in mind that what works for one person might not work for you. Good support materials can also mean outside resources. So like I said, most tarot books are based on the RWS system. So there are loads of books if you decide you want to work with this lineage of tarot. If you want to work with a different system, then finding good resources for the card you're working on will make reading much more fun and insightful. So there are more and more of these becoming available as it becomes more common for people to dabble in other systems outside of RWS. If you're going for a non-standard system, then outside resources aren't generally applicable, which means that the guidebook had better be on point. <laughs> Another thing I look for is how a deck feels in my hands. So you can usually work out if a deck speaks to you by looking at pictures or walking, watching walkthroughs, like I said. But I found that the true test of whether it's a good deck for me is how it feels. Reading tarot is a multi-sensory experience and there is no substitute for having the deck there with you, forming a relationship with it, like I spoke about in my How to Bond with Your Tarot Deck video. The only way to test this is by buying or borrowing the deck and trying it out which I know can be costly. I think it would be so cool if there was like a tarot library where you could borrow decks from and see if they click for you. I think this is one reason why people end up with more decks than they thought they would. Once you've used a deck it can be hard to let go even if you don't fully bond especially if it like meets all the other criteria. It's like I should like this deck so why don't I? But it's that being able to actually use a deck that is fundamental to knowing if it's a good fit for you. This is also why there's loads of people in tarot trading groups on Facebook. <laughs> it's not until you get that deck in your hands that you know for sure either way. All of these things, with the exception of the outside support materials, I guess, are very personal. The system I want to use, the imagery which speaks to me, whether I resonate with the guidebook, how the deck feels in my hands, these are things only I can decide for myself, which is why when someone asks me to recommend a deck, all I can do is say, well, these are decks which I love and explain why I love them with the caveat that we're all different and they might want something else altogether. If you like this video, I have lots of other tarot videos here on the channel. I'll link to some on the screen now. If you have something to say about what I've shared here, perhaps the things which you look for when choosing a deck, or hopefully people will let me know I'm not the only one who finds making recommendations for other people hard, then I'll see you in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Warmest, warmest blessings and I will see you very soon.